This program is brought to you by the Center for a Sustainable Today. Our world is an amazing, complex living organism, and we coexist in a symbiotic relationship. With this great power comes a great responsibility, a responsibility to ensure the future by taking steps to be sustainable today. And now, here is the host of Sustainable Today. Hello, and welcome to Sustainable Today. I'm Sherry Steller, your host for this hour. And if you're a regular viewer of our show, you probably noticed we're not in our usual studio. That's right, we're in a kitchen, and that's because we have a special presentation for you today. We're gonna to be doing a cooking demo. So I have uh, Jenny Rudolph is our guest, and she's on the faculty in the Family and Community Health Department at the Oregon State University Extension. So Jenny, welcome. Thank you so much, Sherry, for inviting me today. Yeah, well, we're pleased to have you here, and this is gonna be an exciting um, segment on food preservation and we'll give our viewers just a little tickler. We're gonna be making what today? So today we're gonna to be practicing with one of my favorite things to preserve at home because it always turns out to be a really great high quality product, which is home canned applesauce. So super easy and take advantage of all those wonderful apples that we have this time of year. Yeah, and it was actually a bumper crop here in Oregon on apples, I understand. Yeah. So, so before we get into the actual nitty gritty and the how to of making applesauce, let's just talk about the topic of food preservation. So obviously the show is sustainable today, so it's um, centered around sustainability. And so it seems like with um, there's been a resurgence in food preservation. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, I kind of think of myself as the the newest generation of home food preservers. It's obviously a tradition that goes back many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, since 2008, um, with the economy and the downturn in the economy, um, there really has been more interest in folks really wanting to do more home gardening. And, of course, when August and September come around and you have a mountain of tomatoes, you need to know what to do with them. And tomatoes so those especially. two things, yeah, those two things, the increase in gardening, home gardening, and the increase in home food preservation really go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Well, it was reminding me of, I know I was making jokes about Portlandia, so uh, if anyone's seen Portlandia, maybe they've seen that one episode that with Colin the chicken, so it was poking fun of the local vores in the Northwest who go into a restaurant and they want to know the entire genealogy or the food history um, of what they're eating. And I know that, you know, obviously that shows a, uh, is a comedic in nature, so they're making fun of it, but it, it's actually becoming, you know, I think more um, of a pressing issue, more important for people to, um, something for people to think about if they want to feed safe, nutritious food to their family. And then if you want to, if you overlay that additional part of seasonal, regional, um, supporting your local community. Absolutely. In the last few years, we've also seen um, a lot of food safety scares in commercially processed foods, salmonella showing up in strange places. And also, you know, there was really like cookie dough, wasn't there some yeah, incidents with cookie dough? Right. So people definitely want to have more control over what's going into their food products. And if you're preserving things at home, growing it yourself, you really do have control mm -hmm. to use organic methods if you want that or to um, uh, just to really control the ingredients. Some people do it for health reasons as mm -hmm. well. So folks who are perhaps on a low sodium diet, yeah, I was just um, say you sodium. can control the amount of sodium or sugar in your home food preserved items as well. So that's a whole nother reason why some people might be more interested in, in doing it themselves. Yeah, and then no uh, commercial preservatives and um, added, you know, dyes or things like that too. Yeah, and then there's also the additional concern of, you know, some people are concerned about the presence of BPA and other um, chemicals in the lining of commercially canned foods as well. And so if you're using, you know, a glass jar, then, then um, it does 
doesn't have that same lining in there. So that could be another reason. And some of the folks in our food preservation classes have talked about that a lot as mm. well as being one of their motivations for wanting to preserve foods themselves. So before we go over um, the equipment and start the process for the applesauce, um, tell me a little bit about what the Oregon State University Extension does. The Extension Service, we just celebrated last year actually our centennial. Oh, so wow. we've been serving Oregonians for over a hundred years <laughs> and hopefully we still look good after I those hundred say, years. Yeah, obviously right. you were. <laughs> and of course canning home food preservation has been around that long as well. And we are part of Oregon State University because Oregon State University is the land grant university here in the state of Oregon. Um, and so that means that we have a specific mission to serve the people by taking that research-based information from the university and presenting it in hands-on formats in the community. And so some of our most popular programs include the Master Gardener trainings, we have Master Food Preserver trainings, we also do a tremendous amount of nutrition and chronic disease prevention um, out in the community, and also things like forestry, natural resources, training landowners on how to preserve the natural resources of their land. Um, so we have a, a tremendous amount of programs and we have offices that are located in almost every county around the state of Oregon and the Extension Service is also a national effort as well. So every state has an Extension Service that provides similar um, resources to the community. Well, wonderful. And we'll, uh, I'll, we'll have you share some of those um, links and phone numbers. And I know you brought a lot of brochures that will be a, a lot of resources that we'll be reviewing later in the show. So I noticed um, Safety seems to be uh, a concern in terms of the food preservation. Yeah, that's our number one rule whenever we're training people and we're doing classes in the community. We always say the number one rule of home food preservation is get good quality tested instructions and then follow them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you have to also follow the instructions right. And so um, because we feel so strongly about that and preventing foodborne illness, um, especially in home canned foods, we make all of our publications available for free online. And so you can come into an extension office and pick up a publication like this, or you can also just go online to extension.oregonstate.edu um, and download all of these for free as well. So this is our canning fruits publication right here. And because we're doing applesauce today, we're gonna That's hold on to this one. This is a really, really important one. There's some other organizations that um, follow USDA guidelines for home canning and food preservation information and they do that very well. The National Center for Home Food Preservation mm -hmm. is located at the University of Georgia. They actually hold the contract with the USDA to do current research related to food preservation. And they put out this very nice um, book called So Easy to Preserve. Um, and it's, a, it's a great like resource, nice so bound looking. book. The only place that you can get it, however, is online via the National Center for Home Food Preservation. You won't find this in any of the bookstores. You have to order it from them, but they offer it at a very reasonable price and shipping's included. And so this contains all of their food preservation Which resources in a bound format. But um, if you're not able to you know, pay the $17 or whatever to get it, all of these recipes are also available for free online at the National Center for Home Food Preservation to download. Um, because it is so important, we feel like, you know, being a partner with the USDA, it's so important for us to get that research-based information out to consumers, to, um, to residents, so that they can do food preservation safely. Um, and uh, another organization that um, follows USDA guidelines very diligently is um, the Ball Company. They've been around also for, for a little over 100 years. Yeah, and I so, think they um, And they also carry major liability insurance. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we consider their recommendations as well to be, to be safe. Okay, so well, this wonderful. So is, this is um, the latest edition of that, and this will run you about $7 or so. So this is a, a fairly affordable resource as well. Okay, so we've got lots of resources. So let's say somebody is, um, they had a garden, an edible, they planted an edible garden, and then they've got, as you said, the tomatoes, or there was a bumper crop of apples, and they're like, what am I gonna do with all this food? We simply can't eat it in season. Sure, it would be nice to be able to enjoy some of this uh, bounty uh, during the winter months or later when it's not available. They're armed with uh, you know the resources, they've gone online, they've ordered some brochures. So. I imagine it could be a little daunting for somebody who didn't grow up in a, um, 
food preservation environment at home, either their, their mothers or aunts or grandmothers, and it's not uh, a, a skill that's been passed down by generations. In fact, I think a lot of people might have thought that it was, it had sort of, you know, been lost, and then definitely since, as we mentioned, the economy, there's been an uptick in that.